here we have three vectors v1 v2 and v3 these three vectors are linearly independent thus they form a basis of r3 v1 v2 v3 is a basis of r3 but not an orthogonal basis. We illustrate how to construct an orthogonal basis. Call it u1, u2, u3 of R3. Our construction of u1, u2, and u3 will begin with our given basis v1, v2, and v3. So let's proceed. Let's define u1 to be the same as v1. <clears throat> On the plane that contains u1 and v2, obtain the orthogonal projection of v2 onto u1. Here you have the plane that contains u1 and v2. We're coming up with the orthogonal projection of v2 onto u1. We use the notation, we use this notation here to mean that orthogonal projection, the projection of v2 onto u1. From, trigono from trigonometry, we obtain that projection, that vector, is the norm of uh, V2 times cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between V2 and U1, times V1 over its norm v1 over the norm of v1. Upon establishing that the inner product of a v1 and v2 is the same as the norm of v1 multiplied by the norm of v2 times cosine of theta, we will obtain that projection, the projection of v2 onto u1, is the same as the inner product of v1 and v2 over the norm of v1 squared times v1. Now, on the plane that contains u1 and v2, on that same plane we're working on, let's now define u2 by making u2 be equal to v2 minus the projection we just obtained, minus the projection of v2 onto u1. That is the same as saying that u2 equals v2 minus the inner product of v1 and v2 over the norm of v1 squared times v1. In this illustration, we can see that this u2 is being defined as the difference between v2 and the projection of v2 onto u1. So what do we have? Let's take a look at this. Here we have u1 and u2. We define u1 to be v1, and we just define u2 to be the difference between v2 and the projection of v2 onto u1. Let's observe that u1 and u2 happen to be perpendicular. What we want to do is what we want to do next is to obtain u3 to define u3. We are going to uh, we're going to expect u3 to be 
somewhere in this direction. So let's proceed. On the plane that contains U1 and V3, obtain the orthogonal projection of V3 onto U1. On the plane that contains U1 and V3, let's obtain the orthogonal projection of V3 onto U1. So what's going on now is, is this. We have our, here we have our vector v1, which is the same as u1. On this plane that contains a u1 and v3, u1 and v3, we're doing this. We're coming up with the orthogonal projection of v3 into u1. You can see. the result of that in this illustration right here. We're making a mark there where the projection came up. Now, on the plane that contains U2 and V3, do something similar. Obtain the orthogonal projection of V3 onto U2. So here you have the plane that contains V3 in U2 and the orthogonal projection of V3 onto U2. The orthogonal projection of V3 onto U2. So going back to this three-dimensional three-dimensional illustration, we can now see that what we're doing is this. We're going to the plane that contains U2 and V3, and we are doing that right there. Obtaining the projection of V3 onto U2. Notice that we also made a little mark in there to keep record of that. We're about to define U3. The way we're going to do that is, let's say, uh, make the observation that uh, the if we add the projections of v3 onto u1 and v3 onto u2 if we add them up we get this resultant right here that's illustrated right here as it turns out that resultant is the same as if we did the following here is our vector v3 Okay, there is our plane containing u1 and u2. If we were to come up with the projection of v3 onto that plane, that's what we would obtain. The resultant of the addition of the projections of v3 onto u1 and projection of v3 onto u2. It does take a geometric argument to establish that this resultant is in fact the projection of V3 onto that plane containing U1 and U2. So let's summarize what we just said. Define U3 by U3 equaling V3 minus the projection of V3 onto U1 minus the projection of V3 onto U2. We can formulate the projections as follows. The projection of V1, uh, the projection of V3 onto U1 is a U1, the inner product of U1 and U3 over the norm of U1 squared times U1. The projection of V3 onto U2 is the same as uh, the inner pro product of U2 and V3 over the norm of u2 squared times u2. So finally we have that u3 is the same as v3 minus the inner product of u1 v3 
over the norm of u1 squared times u1 minus the inner product of u2 v3 over the norm of u2 squared times u2. Here's an illustration. You have the, the sum of the projections of v3 onto u1 and a v3 onto u2. We're subtracting those from v3 to obtain u3. Uh, so there is your u3. And that's what we did to define it. We took uh, the projection of a v3 onto u1 plus the projection of v3 onto u2. We subtracted their sum from v3 and that gave us u3. Let's uh, observe that u1, u2, and u3 form a basis of R3 and that they are mutually perpendicular. Notice that the U1 and U2 are per perpendicular. Let's notice that U1 and U3 are per perpendicular and let's notice also that U2 and U3 are perpendicular. So our goal has been reached.